Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Table Podcast, the pod that helps reform your mind into the mind of Christ. Today, we're talking in depth and looking at the power of determination. The power of determination. I, I got to tell you that this is one of the personalities that God loves to display in our life. And I'm going to tell you a little story on how this revelation came to pass. Um, over this weekend, I decided to go and, you know, we we're supposed to be having this meeting and I didn't notice that the meeting that we were having was a month ahead of time. I am sure I'm not the only one who's done this and yeah, and this happened. So end up going to the place where they were hosting the meeting and um, we realized, Hey, we're like a month ahead of time, but it's all good. We made a joke out of it and then we ended up having the rest of our day in a good, you know, divine order because we did end up having to meet someone that was really God ordained. And on my way to the vehicle to the next destination, I began to ask the Lord, God, what is it about this this that just happened? Is this something that I need to work on? Is this something that, you know, I need to perfect a little more so that this doesn't happen again? And sure enough, of course, God is so willing when we start seeking out uh, where he is in what we're asking. And he's like, I'm releasing the power of determination in you. And I started to see the, the, the attribute of God in his determination and determination is what God Paul, apostle Paul to where he ended up. It's what, you know, caused Peter and the rest of the disciples to pursue the mission of Christ. It was determination that the majority of the Bible was displayed on. And so I want to take a look at first Corinthians chapter nine. If you go to verse 26 and 27, I love this scripture. Apostle Paul is one of my faves. I mean, he's like really one of my faves from all of them. Um, It's one of my desires to be like him. And if I've ever chose a role model, he is it. And in first Corinthians chapter nine, verse 26 and 27, it says, therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body. Myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Ah, Who talks like this in the body of Christ? I just love it. I I read it and it just fires me up to hear someone saying, I am running. No, I'm going to, I'm going to get my body to submit and to be the slave to what I preach. So that I am practicing what I preach because I do not desire to be disqualified. What an act of determination that Apostle Paul had. It was only and it could only have been imparted by the by the Holy Spirit itself. Because I don't know anyone who would be uh, just... just relentless in his pursuit you know the things that that, um that we should desire you know the, the very nature of god in our lives and so um yeah so we're gonna discuss 
the power of determination, really the power that is behind a determination and how determination is a personality trait, which is God's personal being. It is God's personality. And so, you know, it was based on one unction, you know, thinking I've done something wrong, but it, the, the whole thing about what happened this weekend about having the wrong date was just my determination in not missing a, a thing in what God is doing, doing, not missing an opportunity and, and, and not being where he, where he so designed me to be. And I just want to be where he wants me to be. I just want to show up where God wants me to show up. And I just want to be in his will. And that is my determination. And that's what, what, what moved me this weekend to be before my time, which is kind of like my signature move for being a forerunner. I'm preaching met messages and, and, and prophesying things that is before our time. And so I just want to look now at the Greek word for determination, which really, really engaged me to want to know more about this personality trait of God. And it says, literally, it's a diagnosis. The word determination in Greek comes out to a diagnosis. It says it's distinguishing. It's a determination. It's a, a, a territorial examination. It's an, a decision and an act of discernment. The Hebrew word is it's yell to show willingness. It's almost like when I read this in, in the word Hebrew, I saw where you can get the word yield. And so I believe that that's just another topic to discuss on because yielding is really not just short and sweet. It really has to be something you intentionally do. Um, and again, that would come from a place of determination. And so, so the word in Hebrew, it says to show willingness, be pleased, to determine, to undertake, to do anything. So to be determined in the mind of Christ, because that's what we're focusing on in this walk. I'm not talking about the termination of the world, but I'm talking in general about the determination in our walk with Christ. You know, I got to tell you that it's been a while since we've been on anything on social media and we just been focusing. I don't know. I, I've been focusing more about this journey with Christ and God's will for my life and how I'm so designed for purpose not in myself, but to see purpose in others. And that's my reward. And um, just where, where God, where, what are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you doing it? And with whom are you doing it is my question this season. And um, just trying to put together, you know, his desire and his dream for the church. Um, it takes a determination it takes you being determined to actually shut things down so that you can hear and be in that this is one of the places of his will where he longs for us to to take you know full reign on it was really guys a struggle to get on this podcast and even go live because it was you can feel you know the 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 warfare um, to not get back in a place where, you know, God so long, he needs us. He needs our voice. He needs our voice to project into the world and we're not to be silent. And that is exactly what the, the church should be doing. They should be a voice and not be silent. Um, but the process of voicing has to be filtered through the mind of Christ. So to be determined in the mind of Christ, 
has to be intentional because that is what we're focusing on. Our motive behind a determination should be Christ. But to be so determined, there must be a force of God behind it, which we understand is the working power of the Holy Spirit in our self-conscious mind. You know, I noticed that in this season, we don't talk much about the mind. We don't talk much about our soul. We briefly brush it through or we kind of gaze over it as if all assume, or I guess we're assuming that people are actually trying to put the pieces together to see what hinders them from being full in God or what's hinder, yeah, from forgetting the complete fullness of God. And it's not true. It's not so. People, people are, are only doing what they're being led or told to do and they're not really pursuing or determined to find out how the Holy Spirit works in us. How is the Holy Spirit helping us? And where is it that we're not uh, cooperating with the Holy Spirit that will hinder the fullness of that? And so... You know, the working power of the Holy Spirit in our self-conscious mind is where the battle begins, but it's also where the battle should end. And that comes from our place of yielding and our surrender. And it's, it's so much more than just saying, I surrendered or I'm sacrificing or this and that, because people can sacrifice and surrender and never become the 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 new creation which should be carrying over the mind of Christ somewhere they're staying stuck in limbo and and they don't know how to get to that side they stay stuck in the new birth somewhere on the canal or in a stage of of you know in a place of infancy where you're like in a in a child stage or in a teenage stage or and, uh, you know, so on, so on. You know what I'm talking about. There's stages to life and our brain has to grow. And so we must be determined and we must have the Holy Spirit empower us in that determination. And this determination is really the personality of God. So to be determined in the mind of Christ, we should have our motive solely focusing I'm becoming more like Christ. So let's talk a little bit about this subconscious mind. Okay, so kind of I'm going to make it like English where I'm not getting too scientific with our body. Okay, because medical is science. And so our subconscious mind is to the heart as our conscious mind is to the soul. And that's pretty much very simplified, okay? We can have a whole discussion on how that works, but I'm making it really simple that your subconscious mind is to the heart and the conscious mind is to the soul. So the heart of the subconscious is not your actual physical heart. It's the human intuition, okay? It's where it's... It's where we're processing our feeling. So the heart in Hebrew defines it as a feeling, the will, and even the intellect of the human spirit, which is all the elements of the soul. So in the soul, you have all these elements, the mind, the will, all that, the emotion. that's in your soul those are elements in your soul and your spirit it's a lot to process it's a lot to process when you submit to the holy spirit so it becomes the mind or the image of christ to become more and more like the sun 
And a lot of our conflicts are found in that human spirit. It's in the soul. So the self-consciousness is more than just being conscious, okay? okay so we're going to look at that. Um, in Hosea, and the scripture is always usually just... Um, it's just usually repeated, and I don't think we understand it fully if you don't study it out to understand it. And this is one of the issues that will bring you to a place where you're not fully awakened to that self-consciousness that God is everywhere. Okay? So in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of God, and I will also ignore your children. It's interesting here because the mind, the word here, knowledge, okay? The word here, knowledge, it says that they lack the proper knowledge to what pleased God. You know, it's 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 just interesting. They didn't just lack the knowledge of, you know, knowing basic things of the Bible and 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 you know, understanding those things, but they they were they were lacking the knowledge of what pleased God. And we are so in a profound state right now in the world that we do not care in what we do, whether it pleases God or not. Does it make me happy? Are my desires being met? And sure, if it's good, it has to be God. These are the things we're finding in, in encountering in, in, on, in our relationship statuses with people in our communities. It's like, well, I'm sure if it's good, it's got to be God. If it if it's if it's my desire, he so looks to fulfill it. I mean, I have heard some crazy things in these past weeks coming out of the minds of people that are literally going to church faithfully, being discipled, you know, accordingly and have this wrong twisted doctrine in them. And they are just projecting this on people and saying, no, no, this is what it is. It is what it is because it's what they want, not because that's what scripture says. Okay, so that is a form of lack of knowledge because the knowledge that they're processing really does not please God. It just pleases them. And so a self-conscious person will be set apart from a brute person, okay? The brute person is the one that is lacking of the knowledge that pleases God. But the self-conscious person is a godly person that is awakened to their conscience. There's an awareness in his mind. There's an awareness in his soul and his mind is processing this awareness. And that awareness has the power to identify when God's personality is channeling through our very core being. Isn't that like, isn't that fantastic to live in a place in a state of your of your of your mind, in a state of your life? To I be able to identify the power that is coming through as God's personality channeling himself through you so that his personality can reform yours. It's all about reformation. It's all about regeneration. Getting you to regenerate, to reform in his image. So here we are being this a self-aware person, open and willing and able and ready and, and just saying, God, God, I'm here. How, how do you want, how do you want to, you know, how do you want to partner today? And, and he comes through your personality 
And he says, and you know what's what's amazing is the fact that you have enough of a conscious mind to sit there and say, what is happening? It was this a mistake, Lord, or was this you? Am I am I am I too fast, too sloppy? Ah, oh, he loves that. He loves when we stop and ask questions about what is it we're doing and we're inviting him into that human nature, that human affair. And he, he gets to be the sovereignty in it. And he's, he's so willing. And so the Holy Spirit gives a person this measure to be able to, guess what, reflect, to abstract our own acts and our own current state in Christ. So the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to reflect this was this something that I'm I'm becoming too sloppy and God teach me how how to be excellent teach me how to be better and then you're abstracting the very thing that happened and, and how you acted and all of this is happening all at once in pieces and puzzles so that it'll bring you into the current state that you are in with Christ. Ah, it's just a good work of the Holy Spirit. And it's like when you're living in this place, it, it, how do you, how can you not but be joy? And be so joyful in the knowing that the Holy Spirit's working and it's doing what it promised to do in us. So let's go on. Let's look at the of self-consciousness is the will and the character of a person. One of the reasons why we're, we're in a place where we feel like we're stuck or we're not growing in the on the ministry that we're not focusing on what God is doing in our character to our free will see because many times we say Lord we want you to have your way to have we want to surrender our will I love when we say that, God, we want to surrender our will. And we want what you want, Lord. We want what you want, God. And then we get to this place and we start the process and what God starts to take us through. And he's like, okay, I'm going to start re I'm going to take you up on that offer and I'm going to start taking you through the process of who I am. And who you are in me. And so that's the that's the big challenge right there. That's the challenging part that we start going through, that we start to have to really have determination to make sure we're not missing what God is doing. We're not missing what He is reforming in our character, in our will, in our nature, in our thoughts, in our emotions, in our feelings. And how we're projecting things. And so um, these are things he's working on through the Holy Spirit. These are things he's working on. And we can't, we need to be, we need to have a personality of self-awareness. Of mindfulness is what it's really called. Leaders are always to be mindful. Anyone who ever thinks they're, they're called to lead, they must be mindful. Mindful is the awakening to all of this. It's when you're completely awakened to what is God doing? And what am I doing that's not in his, in his will? What is he refining? You know, let's take an example. When God spoke to Moses in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, God said to Moses, and I'm going to read the scripture. I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. This, this statement, 
this statement right here of the I am who I say I am is the Lord himself, God himself, presenting his determination. He's presenting his personality and he's presenting his presence at the same time determination in God. It's like the drawing of the line in the sand. Like when Jesus drew the line on the sand, he was making a statement to the world at that moment. I am here because the I am sent me. Ah, oh, what a refining fire of understanding to hear the Lord say determination it's my personality, but it's also my presence at the same time. I'm determined to reveal my personality and I'm determined to make you aware of my presence at the same time. And so when I declare I am who I am, I'm hoping that you too will declare I am who has sent me. Ah, oh, what an amazing testimony of his glory. It's just glory all the way around with the Lord. You know, he's making a statement. You know that he is the I am. And this is who I will be. That's the statement. You know, Jesus Christ drew the line in the sand to, to make a declaration that they lacked knowledge in. But he drew a line in the sand because it pleased the Father to draw a line and say, uh-huh, he is who he is and I am the one he has sent. And I am making, making it clear that my Father's personality and his presence is right here. And we get that because of what Jesus did, we get to live from that place. So making a statement, us declaring that we're going to be determined in God, we are making the statement saying that this is who I am and this is who I will be. This is who I am becoming. I am this inward person of the set one becoming more and more like his image. So I want you to observe that this personality, it needs to be accompanied by life. The power of self-consciousness and the power of that, of the self-determination that comes out of it. It needs to be accompanied by some sort of activity in order for it to become the fullness of God's spirit. I'm going to say that again. I need you to understand that the, the, the personality, the determination of God's personality, it needs to be accompanied by a life. Okay. So the life, the life giver is in us, okay? Then we get that power. We get that force. And then we become the company that needs an activity in order for it to make up the fullness of God's spirit. Oh, come on, that's wisdom in all of itself. I just unraveled it. You have to observe what God is doing. Be observant in these days. Be determined to watch. Because this is the hour where you must be sharp, cunning, just as the serpent, and wise as his spirit. So self-determination is more than the determination that a brute person shows. Their determination is the result of the influence from without. Their influence is coming from a place of nothing. It's coming from a place that doesn't have the missing piece that doesn't have the peace that pleases God. 
There's no leading of the Holy Spirit. So something else leads it. But the spontaneous, the, the, the spontaneity of a man with God's spirit and the virtue of his free will, it determines his actions from within. That's why that free will, that will of man, must be yielded to the Holy Spirit so that the determination, that action, is produced from within the Holy Ghost. He determines himself in the view, his motives, which is Christ. He's the viewing his motive so that determination can have caused, be caused by the fuel of the great I am himself. Oh, God's personal, guys. He's so relational. He's so relational. He's such a relational God. He has come down on our level in humanity as the son. So that he can have and reveal the sovereignty of how he loves to be involved in our human affairs. And he so understands. He understands where we're at. He meets us there and brings us up. I love the fact that he doesn't meet us there and leave us there. He meets us there to bring us up. To carry us up another level. To refine us to another place. He loves to be involved in our human affairs. He is the highest degree of self-consciousness. And the highest degree of our self-determination. For our minds to rise up to the idea of God, for our minds to get into that place of, of always being on the lookout for where is God? Where is God? Where is God? We have to personally begin to depend on recognizing his personalities in ourselves. We have to make a determination in our life to begin to recognize where is his personality in me? Am I projecting his personality? Am I becoming the one who sent me? Often, maybe never, do we consider in our reflecting when we reflect, because I'm sure many of us reflect, it's called in the Bible, meditating upon the word of God. We often say, chew on it. But what are you doing when you're chewing on it? Are you actually reflecting what the scripture is saying about God? Because the Bible is about God. So what are we saying in our reflecting? What is the personality of God? And when is the moment that I'm reflecting it? Are we looking for those things? Are we looking for the attributes of God? Are we looking for those God-ordained moments? Are we searching out for the awe of God? Are we looking for the breath of God in our situations, in our, in our affairs here on earth? Are we literally looking for heaven on earth? Are we re constantly reflecting on that? Are we even aware that God has a personality? Jesus was the perfect demonstration of it here on earth when he, when he, when we read the Bible and we read those moments, he cried. He laughed. I love this one. He reclined. Ah, so many, there's scriptures there that says Jesus reclined at the table. People would come in the room and find Jesus reclining at the table. What a, what kind of a posture of a, of a, of the son of God that you would walk into the room and find Jesus reclined at the table. It's just, it's just revealing to you his, 
his human nature and how his human nature was never disconnected or disengaged to who God was. Holy Spirit is working day and night on helping us to awaken our subconscious mind to the mind of Christ. Holy Spirit's a relentless worker who is constantly on watch, constantly speaking, constantly refining, constantly pruning, constantly whispering, constantly encouraging. I mean, we can go on about the works of the Holy Spirit, but this is one of the major keys that the Holy Spirit is constantly poking at. Are you becoming the mind of Christ? What can stop someone from becoming fully aware of God in their daily lives? I, I had to stop and think and I'm saying, Lord, what is hindering us? What could be hindering the, the becoming, the fully? And, you know, you could go through the formula prayer life, biblical scripture. But I got to tell you, it's usually a person who denies the Holy Spirit access to our human spirit and puts a bar or what we like to say, a speck in our eye in the way so we cannot recognize the attributes of God. How can you recognize the attributes of God if you deny the Holy Spirit access to your soul? If you're denying Holy Spirit access to your wounds? If you deny Holy Spirit access to your thoughts? If you deny Holy Spirit access to your decisions? And here's this. I want to talk about decisions really quick. Um, one of the things I've noticed in this past week, I have been so aware of, I don't know, I've just been awake to a lot. I'm just like looking for God. I'm just looking for God in conversations. I'm looking for God in humanity. I'm looking for God in everything my eyes touch gaze on because I want to know where is God and what is he doing? Because we're in such an hour of transition. And I got to tell you that a wounded church is a, a church that cannot move forward. We must have healing and deliverance. And we must have healing and deliverance from ourselves. We got to remove the things that are hindering, that are delaying or stopping the Holy Spirit access. And I got to tell you, one of the things I've noticed that is, is a common factor in what we do when we're doing ministry meetings or when we're trying to do ministry visions is that we are solely going after our opinions and what we feel is right for what God is desiring. And I, I've sat and listened to in on a meeting and all I heard was, I feel, I think, what will be better? And it was all opinions, all opinions. No moment for God to say anything because it was so set on their opinion and so sure that this was the will of God. That's a denying of Holy Spirit. That's denying Holy Spirit access to our human affairs so that God can be sovereignty and we can actually have an attribute of God that would be determined to make the right, help us make the right decisions on what he is so desiring. And so what is the hindering? Well, we deny our relationship with the Holy Spirit which then denies Holy Spirit access 
to the parts that his soul wants to heal, wants to make right, upright, all those places that are crooked. And we say, no, you can only go this far. And then we wonder why we can't see God in all that we're doing. You know, a brute person can perceive. But the golly, they apperceive. That, that word, apperceive, it says that when we are in operation in our conscious perception with fullness awareness of God, that word is saying that we are in full operation in our consciousness that we have perception that has the full awareness of God. To perceive, you can become aware of something or have the conscience of something enough to be able to recognize it, realize what it is, or have the understanding of something. But to have the, appre have the apprehension, of the apperception, is to take that information from that perception and the relation of it and process it through God so that it awakens our conscience senses. It is what we call, drum roll please, the process of discernment. Ta-da! So now you know why everyone keeps saying, where's the discernment of the church? What happened to the gift of discerning is because of this. Because we're not, we have fallen asleep. We have fallen asleep in our conscious state. And we are not processing anything through God's mind, through God's being. And so we're just doing opinions and we're just doing what's right and we're just doing what's good and we're just doing what, what seems might work. But that's not discernment. That's called your will. And God is calling for a sharpening, for a redefining of our discernment of him. Hey, he's not saying, I need you to have discernment so you can discern all the spirits. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We run after that. We run after discernment of spirit, but we don't run after the discernment of spirit of, this, of discerning him. So that's great. We're chasing the discernment of, oh, this spirit must be here. This spirit must be there. You know, you should know God more. And that's the reason why you're able to discern spirits. It's because you have a greater understanding of God, his way, his personalities, his attributes, his mind. And that's the reason why I can discern something that's not of him. Because I know him more than I know the devil, more than I know demons, more than I know the works of darkness, because I know him. So God is sharpening our discernment of him because we truly do not fully, one, know ourselves. And here's the second part. We truly do not fully know the relationship or relation to God. So we do not fully know ourselves nor our full relation to God. I, I don't, we can say, oh, I've been doing this 40, 50 years. And I tell you, out of those 20 to 30 years, it took you 20 to 30 years to grow up. You've made mistakes. You've, you've done immature things. You've had to be delivered. You've had to go through healing. You've had to, to, you've had to fix your error and come to truth. It took long because when you're in ministry, you think you're doing it right, but that's never going to be the case. You're always going to have to process everything through God himself. And it should have always been that way. First him, then the world. But the divine consciousness is helping us to become whole by enforcing us with his determination in this hour. We have to be determined in the body of Christ right now on how we're going to pursue moving forward 
now that things are different, now that the world looks different, now that COVID has taken out lives, now that now that the wicked is rising, now that darkness is not hiding, how are we determining our walk in Christ for the boldness of the sake of the kingdom? How are we moving forward? We have to be determined to not shut up, back down, and actually begin to redefine um, people by retuning them back to heaven's radio station, pretty much. Because they're so full of so many things. False teachings, false perceptions, false feelings, false personalities, for uh, soul wounding things have never been dealt with. They've never told anyone the truth about the things they're suffering, about the, the dark things in them, because they didn't want to be judged about what they were going through. And so they went on their life with these issues, thinking it'll go away. But things don't go away. Roots are not to go tear down. To redo. Have we been doing that in the body? Have we been casting out, tearing down, and reestablishing God's house? Have we done that? If not, then you better believe that this is where we are. Right now, as we speak, the face of the church is changing. So the word determination, it shows up 43 times in the Bible. It shows up as be determined to obey God. Determined not to sin. Determined to stand firm. That's really what I'm speaking about. It's about us standing firm in our faith. And not handing it over. God helps us to be determined. And to be determined to follow Christ. Don't bow down to another God. Because there's many gods rising up right now. And I got to tell you. There's been a lot of fake Jesuses being. And we have to bring back what is true. We have to redefine the eyes of our soul declutter the wounds and bring healing to those places so that we can actually really see heaven and God in all the things we do and not our carnality. I've been pretty pretty are and how they think that these carnal things are in heaven. That they're an actual topic and an issue in heaven. No, the topics and the issues in heaven are already done. We have give, been given the reign to this to this kingdom down here so that we can we can take it back for God. Bring everything back to its state, a God nation. Often in the Bible, when you go into determination, you start reading. How God spoke, and every time in the majority of the of his of the when God spoke through the prophets, he said, I am determined. And it was, I am determined to do this. So there was an activity, an action. And he used those people to bring forth that action. You'll find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 11, that it says, All these are the work of one. And the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one. Just as he as he determines. Just as he determines. <laughs> Holy Spirit is distributing to each one as he determines. He's determining how he's distributing it in each one of us. We are not in determination. Holy Spirit is bringing forth the determination and we have to pick up. What is he determining? What's the verdict here? 
because determination will bring you a verdict. First Corinthians chapter 15, 38, but God gives it a body as he determined and to each kind of seed, he gives it right there as has determined. Determination is a choice to life from new creation and not from the, the Adam mindset. Galatians chapter six, verse 15, it says, neither circumcised or uncircumcised means anything. What counts is the new creation. To enter into the mind of a citizen of the new creation, you must first go through the new birth. New birth is the process by which the Holy Spirit transforms and removes the old human spirit, nature, heart, nature, and installs the new heart, nature of Christ. Christ's nature is being replaced in those old human mindset. Bringing us back to the first scripture, how Paul is so determined to become what he is preaching to the people. And he will not do it without full awareness of the goal. To reach the prize of life is to become the image of Christ and that is what Apostle Paul is preaching in his missionary journeys in the book of Acts. And we also must have a determination to be like Apostle Paul, a, a goal, our determination to reach the prize of life, to become the image and, the, and have the mind of Christ. And that when we are preaching or teaching, that after we are done, we too are self-reflecting if we if we are found in what we just preached. So I hope that this encouraged you today. I hope that it brought into maybe some areas that you were not awakened to this very moment. And if you are that, you, you just, you, we have been so confounded in the church. We don't even understand the depth of darkness that people have been lured into. And I have been hearing testimonies of how, how dark and demonic people have been led since the age of five into places and arenas that a child should not have grown up in. And guess what? A lot of these people, their family were Christians who would sit on Sunday and hear the word of God and go to Wednesday rituals to, to sacrifice their children. So you're not, you're, you're, you're in a bubble when you think that these things are only to be applied because we got to teach the church. You're in a bubble because we're supposed to live this way so we might have the power of the Holy Spirit. So that we will have the power of the Holy Spirit fully submerged in that. So when we encounter these people, these dark dark places they've gone to, the power of that will be broken in an instant. Healing in an instant. That it wouldn't take five years to set the captive free. So I'm just going to pray us out. Sovereign Lord. We are boldly choosing. To live for you. And you alone. Holy Spirit. Infiltrate our hearts. Infiltrate our soul. And infiltrate our subconsciousness. So we can be fully aware of the transformation power that you are bringing forth and pulling through and redefining our image in Christ. Holy Spirit, help us to surrender our human will for God's will. Holy Spirit, Help us to reveal, to see when it is our opinion and not God's decision. Increase us, Holy Spirit, 
increase Holy Spirit and teach us how to decrease. Increase Holy Spirit and teach us how to decrease. As Jesus becomes the center of our heart, the center of our soul, and the center of our life, and the center of our eyes, that Jesus becomes the iris of our eye. And as when you draw near, Lord, Holy Spirit, help us to be sensitive to that drawing of him. Help us to be sensitive when the Lord is drawing near. And as we step into a world that is, is literally unaware of your presence, let us take each and every step. Let it be ordered by God. Awaken. Every step bring awakening to his presence. Awakening to your whisper of transformation. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being the good work. Thank you for being the comforter. Thank you for being the teacher. Thank you. Thank you that you are always doing what you said you had promised to do. And bringing us closer every day to God. And as we begin the journey of thinking and acting or behaving or transforming into the image of our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that that is exactly what you so long to do in the body of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we thank you and we honor you. And we, we just, Lord, we just want to glorify you. We just want to glorify you, Jesus. We just want to bless your name. We want to, we want your name to be known. And so, Lord, we thank you. And we ended it in Jesus' name. And I thank you for tuning on. We will be having more discussions on different topics. Um, we just... We just love to bring everything to the table where Jesus is reclining and a nation is being reformed because God is helping make decisions to change the culture and bring back his people to him. So I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to engaging in our next podcast. Until then, be blessed.